Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and yesterday the Mets played an interesting game in the afternoon. A lot of things happened. Um, the Mets won. That's a good thing. Um, pulled to within three and a half of uh, the second wild card. And um, have an off day today, but I want to talk about yesterday's performance. Noah Syndergaard's outing, um, the offensive outburst that came in the ninth inning, and uh, the fact that the season's not over. I'm going to do that on today's show. That's right, I said it. The season ain't over. Um, you know, and I like I like the uh, the notion that this team keeps pulling the fans back in. Um, and, and it's funny. I mean, I laugh at it every time I see it on Twitter. Like, oh, this is the 18th time now that they've pulled me back in. I, I chuckle at it because I'm the type that I don't get pulled out, right? Like, I'm, I'm in it no matter what. I, I'm attached to every game. I don't give up on, on this season, as, even though I should. Um, so I, I find it funny when people say, you know, the, this team has sucked me back in. And, uh, and look, don't leave because this is this this team is is a, an absolutely unbelievably resilient bunch of guys and they play well together and the chemistry they have is fantastic and I said it yesterday I'll say it again uh, or maybe I said it two days ago the 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 experience these guys are getting from this season is invaluable it is invaluable um and that's it. I mean, the bottom line is this is whether this is a playoff campaign or not. This was a successful season. I'm sorry, it just was. And it's not a loser's mentality. It's understanding the idea that they're building towards something, and this is a great step in the right direction this season. Um, but yesterday, um, let's talk about Noah Syndergaard. Uh, he got his wish. Um, Rene Rivera was behind the plate not to Wilson Ramos, also not Tomas Nito, but uh, not Wilson Ramos, and it was funny, in the first inning, um, it, Noah came out and struck out the side, and uh, he gave up a hit in between, but it was still like, wow, he struck out the side, this is this is going to make a difference, and it turned out not to be a difference at all, right, no, no difference at all, performance was what it was, um, Gave up two home runs to a guy who had a grand total of two home runs up to that point. Um, it's it's just, you know, I'm not going to get into this whole whole thing here, but I, I'm, I guess I understand the people that are are. Now I can't say I understand it. I, I, there are a lot of people who are anti Syndergaard, and, and I, I'm I'm. Very much like I don't give up on the, the the season. I don't give up on the team. I don't give up on the players on the team either. Like I, it's it's going to take me a long time to look back in my memory bank and figure out that there was a guy who played for the Mets that I just didn't like. Um, just the jersey makes me like the, the player, and I'm I'm just kind of wired to root for that player and that person when he wears the Mets jersey. Um, the fact that. Uh, that I think Syndergaard is an extremely talented pitcher, notwithstanding, I can't root against him. And I felt as though a lot of people were rooting against him um, yesterday. They wanted him to fail so that they could say, see, it isn't the catcher. And the thing is, is, is and the thing that bothers me so much about this is this whole, this whole situation got so twisted up because of the leak. And... <laughs> That's the part that annoys me the most, as I said before. Like, this story does not need to be public. It should not have been public. This was handled properly. It was handled with back channels. And if you're trying to convince me that Noah Syndergaard is the only pitcher in baseball who talks to his bosses about getting better and, and figuring out a way to improve, you're crazy. I just I can't believe that. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe that Noah Syndergaard is the only pitcher in baseball who looks at his numbers and says, boy, I pitch much better in X situation. Whatever X situation is, day game versus night game, um, splits, lefty-righty, they look at these things because they want to improve. And in Noah Syndergaard's case, the starkest difference 
was the fact that he had a lower earned run average by three runs when Wilson Ramos isn't behind the plate. In no way, shape, or form did he call Ramos out. This is all on the New York Post, the way they framed this story, and the way Mets Twitter has run with it. And for those of you who hate Noah Syndergaard, this is a perfect narrative to continue that. And I, I just, I don't get it. Was he good yesterday? Nope. No, he wasn't. Has he been good in a while? No, he's had a bunch of miserable starts in a row. But he's trying to fix it, and that's the part that I like. The part that I like is that he's looking at his numbers and he's saying, you know what, this isn't good enough. I'm better than this. I need to figure out what to do. And I said before, he needs to figure out how to pitch to Ramos. There's no question about that. Because Wilson Ramos is the superior, superior all-around player. But in the short term, trying, to, so trying something different as a short-term fix isn't the worst thing in the world. Not when you're trying to win every single game. So I, I'm sorry I, I didn't want to do this, but I just did. <laughs> um, and, and now let's talk about the positives from yesterday. Um, the Mets were trailing. Noah put the Mets in a hole. Um, trailing by two runs, I think, through the majority of the game. Uh, I have to con admit that I had to watch most of the game on mute. I was in the middle of a call from 5.30 till uh, 7 o'clock, so I didn't get to uh, hear most of the game, and I was only sort of 50% watching it, but I got to see the ninth inning, and that was um, that was the part that I enjoyed the most, right? The big comeback, the Seth Lugo base hit. Um, that was a huge win for the Mets yesterday. That was That was a... The season is on the brink here with three outs to go. And if we lose, we're done. And they won. They came back to win. Does it help that the Rockies are a terrible team? Yes. It absolutely does help that the Rockies are a terrible team. But the bottom line is the Mets didn't roll over and die. They didn't give up. They fought, came back, and ended up winning the game. Now, um, Pete Alonso hit his 49th home run yesterday. That's worth mentioning. Uh, and a good at bat. Uh, by the way. Um, the other thing that I need to talk about is Mickey Calloway. Uh, in the sixth inning, Mickey Calloway decided to allow Rene Rivera to come to the plate with the bases loaded, two outs, while having literally a stacked bench of guys including J.D. Davis, Luis Guillorme, Joe Panic, all three of whom are better hitters, than Rene Rivera. Not to mention the fact that all three of them are a little bit faster than Rene Rivera. And Mickey Gunna Mickey decided to leave Rivera out there to bat, and it didn't it didn't end well. <laughs> it did not end well. Rivera grounded out, inning was over, and it was the sense I got the sense at the time that boy, this was it. This was the opportunity to score and get the lead back, and now they blew it. Um but that wasn't the case. The, the Mets bailed Mickey out later in the game, as we just discussed in the ninth inning. So, two out of three in Colorado. I would have preferred a sweep, as we all would have, but um, got to keep winning. I mean, just got to keep winning. Uh, 11 games, le sorry, 10 games left to play uh, from here on out. Mets do not play tonight. They are on the road, uh, actually, probably already in Cincinnati. And I will be heading to Cincinnati tomorrow. To, uh, to see the game tomorrow night and to go to the seven-line outing on Saturday at Great American Ballpark, which will be fun. Um, so this means a couple of things. One, uh, there will be no show tomorrow, uh, which is good because there's no game tonight. Um, but I'll be back on Monday to recap the Reds series. And again, I mean, look, there's three series left. You've got three with the Reds wrapping up the road part of the schedule. And then come come home for four with the Florida, sorry, Miami Marlins before the season ends with three against the Braves um, next weekend. So the uh, <laughs> the season is on the line. The Mets cannot afford to lose games. Uh, and tomorrow night it'll be a challenge because it's Jacob DeGrom and Luis Castillo. And Castillo has been brilliant for the Reds, just really good. It's amazing with the Reds, uh, looking at it, seeing their pitchers and how well they've performed um, compared to what we're used to seeing out of the Reds. You know, they're usually a poor pitching team and a, and a dynamically offensive team. Um, this year's kind of like the polar opposite, right? No offense to speak of, uh, or at least not enough, uh, and the pitching has been outstanding. So go figure. 
Um, but I'll be uh, I'll be back on Monday, like I said, to talk about what I hope is a road sweep of the Cincinnati Reds. I also think Pete Alonso is going to have a couple of uh, uh, home runs this weekend that they're going to inch him that much closer to uh, Aaron Judge's record of 52. He currently holds the major league lead by one over the Reds' is Eugenio Suarez. So that'll be fun to watch the two uh, numbers one and two home run hitters in baseball uh, square off this weekend as well. So going to be a fun weekend. I'll be back on Monday to talk about it. Uh, until then, I thank you for watching today. I appreciate it, as I always do. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.